I've lived in the village all my life and I've had family sort of live in the village years before I was born as well. The village is a lovely place, nice and quiet, very friendly. Um, you can meet someone on the street even if you don't know them, you know, they'll say hello and it's just, you feel a safe environment to live and to sort of be around really. For me to be able to buy a house here I'd have to have a lot of money. <laughs> um, I couldn't afford to put down a deposit at the moment um, and rent's very high as well. I think many people realise that um, living in Devon, wonderful place to be, but property prices are extremely high and it became very apparent that if local people actually wanted to stay with close family um, and actually wanted to work within the area then it was important that for the village to survive we needed to grow that village. Well, we started about 12 and a half years ago when the County Council came to us and said they had this farm that was coming to the end of its tenancy. They thought there maybe was a better way of disposing of it than they would normally do and we looked together at whether we could find a new way. So we became a bit of a pilot scheme for Devon. So we spent the next five or six years developing a scheme which was slightly larger than the one we have now and we put in a planning application for that. It was approved by the District Council government office for the South West then decided to call it in for a public inquiry but when it went to public inquiry it was eventually turned down by the Secretary of State and so I think at that stage having put an awful lot into it and then to be turned down it seemed was it worth going on at all but we actually decided we wanted to pursue it so we put together the slightly different scheme which is the one we now have we put that in for planning application in 2008 again it was approved by the District Council fairly quickly and this time, in just 18 days, the Government Office decided not to call it in for a public inquiry. And so we then embarked on a long process of legal documentation and so on to get to where we are today. We broke ground on the site in December 2010. The site itself is comprising of 39 dwellings, of which 23 will be market houses, but 16 will be affordable dwellings, nine of which will be for um, equity purchase um, and seven of which will be for affordable rents. We have six workshops which will be for rent as well as purchase and within one of those workshops we're going to be building uh, providing the district heating plant which will be wood chip biomass plant. We will have a new school, we have a community building, we have a community woodland. But the eventual project is, is valued at around 12 and a half million pounds in total and that's split between different things. So the County Council will build the school eventually, not at this stage, but although they've, they've put in up to 850,000 to put the infrastructure in for the school. And we've got this very valuable two million pounds development loan from Triodos, of course, which get, helps us to be able to do the practical work at this stage. Um, we've had, in the end, we had some money from the Homes and Communities Agency, about 360,000. We'd originally hoped not to have to go for that, but the fall in property values has forced us into taking a different approach. And I think it's important to say that in projects like this, you're constantly having to review the overall viability of your project, because what you start out with is not necessarily where you end up. Triodos is Europe's leading ethical bank. Uh, and what that means is we provide people with the opportunity to use their money in a conscious way and we provide an opportunity for like-minded organisations that want to make a positive impact on the world and change society and uh, improve our natural environment. Uh, we provide them with an opportunity to work with a bank that shares those values. And we do that by guaranteeing that we only finance projects that can demonstrate that they have a positive social or environmental impact. And that transparency is important because if you think about the role of a bank in society, I love the analogy of society being the human body and the bank being the beating heart, pumping blood to the different parts of the body uh, that need the blood for, for good health and so on. And I, I think the problems we've had in recent years is banking's forgotten that. It's forgotten that role. And what we're trying to do is listen to where society needs money, and that's exactly what we're trying to do in the Community Land Trust movement, is listen to what's needed and try and find innovative ways of financing people's visions. We ended up looking at two banks and Triodos gave us the best deal, frankly. But we've been keen to work with them and they with us and that's important because I think it's important that the community can see that we are working together and it's not just about profit. The High Bickington project is, is pioneering. It's the first one we've been able to finance in England and it's, it's visionary. I mean, there will be uh, 40 homes here, there will be three workshops, uh, community-owned woodland, there's renewable energy on the site. and. You know, those aren't just things that are fit for today, but they'll be generating an income uh, for future generations.